Normally managed by our old pal Sean Connor, the two clubs in question, Sligo Rovers and Bohemians. Sean went to Sligo to cast an eye over his former charger. What's that phrase in football? Never go back? That's exactly what we asked Sean Connor to do last Friday when his former club, the Bohemians and Sligo Rovers, met the showground. And for Sean, it's time for reflection on his return to the eighth now. I've been out in America with uh, John McGinley, uh, and we were coaching um, up in Cincinnati. I actually come back uh, to be interviewed for the Kissingville job. Uh, that didn't happen. And uh, Jerry Cassidy, who had been helping me, uh, recommended me then for, for the Flagler Rovers job. And obviously, uh, Steve Bruce helped with that as well. And uh, I arrived at Flagler. And I think had two very, very good years. You know, the club had been in the first division for uh, seven previous seasons. Uh, we won the title. And then we really. Uh, Supplemented that and had a good season in, in, in the Premiership, finishing fifth. Uh, I think I left them with a good young squad, uh, some very, very good young players, and hopefully over time they'll begin to appreciate the job that I've done. But you know, I understand that uh, the nature of football, you know, because you leave, people aren't going to be happy with that. And then the other cost of going to the is to to part company with me, and uh, I really don't bear any, any malice to anyone there. Again, I had a lot of time for the majority of the players. Uh, brought a lot of new players to the club. Uh, don't regret going there. Oh, are you, you alright? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 I felt that it was the most difficult period in trying to uh, re-establish the club. Uh, change the mentality of the players and uh, we had a we had a reasonable first season, you know, finish in third. Uh, back in Europe, obviously won cup final and a cup semi-final, so that was uh, I think the start of a process that obviously my past time has got to try and carry on. So what exactly did Sean expect from his very own Rovers return? There will be no, no emotions for me in terms of which side I want to win. Uh, I think it will be an exciting game and I think probably of the weekend for me. It's probably the best game of, of all the fixtures. You know, I think you're going to have uh, Bohemians looking to try and get over last week's with the patch. And you've got Flagler Rovers I'm sure trying to get the first home win. And Sean's assessment of his old club's new gaffers, Pat Fenlon and Paul Cook. The first manager after myself probably tried to make too many changes too quickly. I think what Paul did was come in and embrace the, the core of the squad that was there, uh, the qualities that were within that squad, and, and over a period of time has put his own slant and his own flavour on things. And certainly last year they were a difficult proposition. Uh, I think he's added good quality, and, and again, Flagler Rovers will be a, a, a huge shoe, and I think for a top six finish. I would have watched Bohemian play a lot of times last year and uh, knows a lot of his players. You know, his record in the league speaks for itself. I think uh, he certainly got the squad in, in a better shape than, than I got it. I'm sure he'll be hoping to make a, a genuine title challenge this year. Uh, I know that that's what the, the fans will be expecting. But uh, I think, you know, he's obviously got the job and it's his, it's his job to take it forward now and see if he can deliver some silverware. The game itself was worth the journey. It turned out to be a thriller. Drivers Raphael Chicago and looked at the head wide early on, John appreciating the effort. Holmes took the lead on 77 minutes when Lee Burns fired home after a season of the corner. John seemed to be clearly the Sligo. Anto Murphy's long throw in led to Rovers levelling two for Chicago during the end of the second half. Chicago's first start of the season. Bowles had a Ken O'Man goal chalked out for a foul on Richard Bush just a few minutes later. Meanwhile, Sligo suffered the same fate when inexplicably Mauro Almeida had his effort blown up. Just 20 seconds afterwards, Chris Turner provided Glenn Stone with the opening for a crucial new goal. Gavin Pierce was unlucky not to level with a close range header that hit the ball upright. Coleman's stunning dribble deserves to pass the man with the equaliser, but it just wasn't to be. One consolation for the Killy Beggs man, a call up to the Ireland on the 21 squad. He deserves it after the game. First half we were in affidations at all, in my opinion. You know, second half I thought we were terrific. I thought we competed, we got amongst bowls, and we generally had a good goal. I was happy with the performance, I thought we worked really hard. We didn't get that amount of effort last week. And we asked the players to do that this week and we got it. Uh, for me, the difference between the two sides was just the experience in the Bohemian team. I thought uh, they closed the game out. 
last ten minutes, killed it all. It's nice to see that this time it's probably been uh, welcomed back uh, from both both sets of fans and, and obviously from lots of players. I think there's something like 14 or 15 players in the park at that time, so that was good. Yeah, I know uh, Sean enjoyed that, uh, Paul, the other night. For Bohemians, that's a great three points, isn't it, at his children? Yes, indeed, yeah. That's the, the second, you know, women, they're, uh, they're, they're going to be, uh, I think, will be involved in the in the title race up to, up to the end. Uh, I think Pat would like to increase a few, his numbers in the squad during the summer if he has the finance to do so. Uh, I think uh, they've got to do that to, 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 to keep in the race, but it's, uh, but there's not too many teams going up, up, up there this mm -hmm. season. Roddy, we saw in Tony's report there uh, a couple of disallowed goals. I don't think they're going to be in the shake for the title, Paul. Uh, had to get that one in, Tom, but that's something I don't agree with. Watching them on two occasions, I don't think they have the continuity in their play. I don't think they have the balance in their team. And I just don't feel at this particular time, this season, they're going to be in the title race. Yeah, they're going to be in the top three. Mm. Well, let's have a look at the uh, disallowed goals, because they, they, they played a major uh, role in the game there, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They the first one, Ken O'Man. Well, from what we can see here, I mean, the goalkeeper kicked to the ball and smashed into, into a Bohemian player. There was no intent on the Bohemian player. This one here is an absolute mystery from where I'm looking. Um, it was a ball, a uh, good delivery into the box, and uh, a great finish. But I mean, if you look what happened afterwards, it was straight down to the end of the park, counter attack, strike the one against St. Patrick Athletic, and the ball is in the back of it within 20 seconds. So, you know, a double. A double, a double whammy, a double penalty for for um, for Sligo Rose. I mean, just allowed one and then straight down to the other and all down. So, I mean, it's a shame we're sitting here talking about the game. It looked a good game, two, two teams played good football. To be talking about a referee in the season, mm. we're both very poor. And I mean, it, in a strange way, balanced out, both teams suffered from, mm. from the ref making a bad call. But it's a shame that we're talking about things like that when it should be just about the football. Yeah. Well, Richard, it's every week now. It does seem to be a lot more I got to see FIFA giving out one of these famous directives, and then Central Dampshire Association gives the attacking team the benefit. That's it. want to see goals. In offside decisions, and in fact, those two goals were quite legitimate. All right. Uh, well, it's uh, unfortunate, and hopefully they get the pitch sorted out there in the showgrounds fairly soon as well. Well, we're going to move on, and this week, 